Hello, I'm Dr. Jeremy Bernstingle, the Managing Director of Regenesis Europe. On behalf of the entire company, I'd like to talk to you about what you should know about the biological degradation of chlorinated compounds. Chlorinated solvents, such as perchloroethene, PCE, and trichloroethene, TCE, have been widely used as industrial solvents and degreasing agents in heavy manufacturing. These solvents are also used in the dry cleaning industry to launder textiles throughout the world. In the US, even though the disposal of these chemicals is regulated by the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, RECRA, of 1976, leaking storage tanks and poor housekeeping and disposal practices have led to widespread releases of these chemicals into both soil and groundwater. PCE and TCE contamination are considered a serious health risk and a threat to the environment in most developed areas of the world. Chlorinated compounds are also a key ingredient in modern pesticides and herbicides, which have also been shown to impact the quality of soil and groundwater in many regions. Chlorinated solvents such as PCE and TCE, unlike petroleum hydrocarbons, are not readily biodegradable under aerobic or oxic conditions. However, these chemicals can be biodegraded by anaerobic or anoxic processes involving specific microbes that utilise the contaminant itself as an electron acceptor in place of oxygen in their respiration. In this natural process, known as dehalo respiration or reductive dechlorination, the microorganisms gain energy from attaching dissolved hydrogen to the chlorinated solvent molecule and in this process remove the chlorine atoms from the solvent they swap the chlorines for hydrogens on the contaminant molecule. Once the chlorines are removed, the compound no longer represents a significant threat to the environment and indeed can be readily biodegraded further in a similar manner to petroleum hydrocarbons. Although the process of dehalo respiration is a natural phenomenon, the rates at which it proceeds in the environment can be very slow indeed. For this reason, Environmental scientists and engineers have studied ways in which to stimulate or enhance the process, enhanced dehalo respiration or enhanced reductive dechlorination, as the practice is termed. To achieve this, energy sources in the form of chemical substrates are added to the contaminated subsurface where they in turn ferment and in so doing release dissolved hydrogen as a natural byproduct. And this is exactly what is needed to stimulate the desired solvent degradation. But for this to be effective as an engineering approach, the dissolved hydrogen must be generated in a steady, controlled manner. This enables the critical microflora to develop, grow and adjust to the now optimal conditions for solvent destruction. If the controlled release is not achieved and instead occurs as large bursts, for example if the substrate used is soluble or readily degraded, it does little more than stimulate the unwelcome production of methane. In contrast, controlling the substrate fermentation to ensure a steady release of dissolved hydrogen in the target formation optimizes the conditions for dechlorination, resulting in efficient and complete contaminant removal. Beyond this, of course, it also means that the expense and disturbance of multiple applications or of ongoing mechanical dosing equipment can be eliminated. A simple, single injection event can be sufficient to achieve the clean-up goal. Remediation practitioners have employed the use of injectable substrates in the form of electron donors for over a decade now. Of significance is the type of material used and how it generates available hydrogen over time. As stated earlier, some electron donors produce hydrogen more readily and rapidly upon application while others produce hydrogen more slowly and over a longer time frame. More recent advances in technology development and chemistry, as seen in a recent product from Regenesis known as 3D Microemulsion, have produced a commercial electron donor with a uniquely engineered three-stage hydrogen release profile. This three-stage release mechanism provides an immediate, days, weeks, mid-range, one to nine months, and long-term, one to five years, production of hydrogen that creates optimal conditions for anaerobic microbes to perform their invaluable, highly cost-effective contaminant biodegradation. Additionally, the patented molecular construction of 3D microemulsion enhances subsurface distribution of the substrate upon application, in turn 
saving time and money by increasing the radius of influence of the material and thereby reducing the number of injection points required to cover a given area. Regenesis, the global leader in advanced technologies for groundwater and soil remediation, provides a range of patented, controlled release electron donor products specifically engineered to enhance naturally occurring anaerobic biological remediation processes. Regenesis maintains a highly qualified staff of scientists, engineers, geologists and chemists to support environmental professionals in selecting and applying appropriate technologies for enhanced chlorinated solvent bioremediation. For more information or a free technology applicability consultation, visit regenesis.com or call 949 366 8000.